Oh my god, I almost dropped my phone. Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Monday. It is 2.30 and I am cooking a late lunch, which is salmon. Okay, YouTube, I need to trim my hair. The plan was to grow it out long so that I have enough hair to style it into some new hairstyle, but the hair right around my ears is starting to poke my ear and it's irritating my ear, so I keep on rubbing it and it gets it all red. So I have to do something. I don't want the same haircut as I had before. I don't know. We will plug the shaver in, we'll plug the trimmer in, something will happen, and then we'll see what the result is. Okay, YouTube, here's the result of the haircut. It, I'm sure it doesn't look anything different than when I cut it the last couple of times. I've left this awkward part. I didn't trim all the way to where I had the part before. So I'm just hoping the hair there will just start growing out. Luckily, I think my hair grows pretty quickly. So before the end of the month, I think the part will be completely gone, but I think I just have to trim it every week because I still want to keep the sides short. I don't know what the final hairstyle is that I want. If you guys have suggestions, comment down below. I did not sleep well last night. I had my earplugs on because I knew the construction would start up at like 6.30 or 7 in the morning. Right around like 6.30 or 7 in the morning, my right ear got itchy, like my inner ear. So I had to take the earplugs out. I couldn't go back to sleep because the construction started and was super noisy this morning. So I was just toying with the idea, but like maybe i want to get a moving and storage company pack up all my stuff here put in my 30 days notice and then i would just like get an airbnb in la and then maybe that helps with the house hunt as well the original current plan is that i would just stay here until i find a place to buy and then I would do my 30 days notice once I know that the place I want to buy is secured. I don't know if I can wait that long. This place drives me crazy. The construction is like full-fledged now. It's every single day of the week they're doing something. Every single day of the week and it's not just in the morning but sometimes at night they have like concrete trucks that come in at midnight to be pouring concrete. Why are you pouring concrete in the middle of the night. For some reason this morning, there was a letter stuck onto the outside of my door and there was like a pamphlet stuck under my door and there were like solicitations for things that I don't think we should be getting stuff for. Usually we have that stuff in the mail room, but like for them to go door to door in the building is like it's supposed to be a secured building. How are these people getting in? So looking at the building itself, like the way you have to have a key fob to call the elevator, you have to have a key fob to like for the entrances. This is not like the nicest area in the city, but yeah, people do get into the building. There was an email that the landlord sent out last week to say we've had reports of packages being stolen. The package delivery room is its own room in the underground parking that is locked and you also need a key fob to get in there. So you need fob in to get to the building, fob to get to the elevator, and you need to fob a third time to get into the living room. Shit is still being stolen in there. Seriously? We're gonna change the topic onto cars. I've never ever talked about cars before because I don't have a car and it's not really a topic that comes up when you're in lockdown. But when I move to LA, I do need a car, which in a way sucks because it's an expense. It's not just 
buying the car, you have to maintain it, you have to repair it if something goes wrong, you have to feed it gas, you have to pay insurance for it. So in a way, having a car is expensive. However, I love cars, I'm a car enthusiast, I love driving. It didn't used to bother me at all when I had to drive 45 minutes from West Hollywood to Santa Monica where the office was in my old job. And then it was a full hour coming back. So you can imagine uh, every single day, I was happy in the car. I would do that commute again instead of being on the Muni for 20 minutes or being on the BART for 20 minutes. It's like horrible. It smells, it's old, it's dirty, and you're packed in there like sardine cans. Anyways, because I'm going back to LA, I'm looking for a car. My criteria for a car is not practicality because I'll just go buy a Honda Civic and be done with it. Because I'm a car enthusiast, I need my car to be entertaining or have some sort of like amusement factor, but it doesn't need to be like a sports car. I think having like an electric car would be like kind of fun or having something like a Jeep Wrangler, which is completely 180 from anything I've driven before. But I had a Jeep for a rental, oh, this is like five or six months ago uh, in LA for like three or four days. And I was surprised how much I liked it. It's basically just has to be some sort of interesting, right? For me, like even a minivan would be more interesting than like a Toyota Corolla. It's like super, super blah, it just has no interest whatsoever. It's just an appliance. You guys are definitely starting to leave more comments. So I wanted to take a little time today to go through some of the more recent comments. There are a few good ones in here. Hey again, Ron. If I were looking for another place, I would go bigger. You can always update the insight later. That's what I'm thinking too. I prefer a place with more square footage, but the inventory is still pretty tight right around the area I'm looking, but we just started searching listings. So we have a bit of time to go. My realtor said just because of the current climate, inventory might go up a little bit. There also seems like some owners that are reluctant to post their listing even though they're ready to sell. Possibly prices might be going down a little bit as we approach the summer as well. And there's one of you guys that said, I'm in IT also, can you talk about your path into management positions? I can talk about how I went into management. So I was just um, a regular IC or individual contributor. I was more on like support slash engineering side of things for several years at a large company. The way I chose to move into management was from moving to a big, huge company to a small little startup. The small little startup was looking for an IT manager, someone that could bring big company type IT experience and thinking into their tiny little company. And they were willing to take a chance on me, someone who's not technically been a manager before, but I was like, I guess, a more senior type of a support person. So I was able to join them as a manager, started doing manager things, kind of picked it up as I went along. So that's technically how I got into management. So in a big company, people tend to be very specialized in their roles, right? If you are a IT support help desk person in a large company, that's gonna be 99% of what you do. There's not gonna be any time where you're doing any other parts of IT except for help desk support. In a small company though, that's not true. Just in a small company, take an IT again as an example, you just have maybe a few people working in IT. In a large company, the IT department might be huge, so there's dedicated sub teams within IT for support and procurement and for sysadmin, whatever all the departments are, right? Smaller companies can't afford to have all those tiny little sub teams, right? Because they're just too small. So they might only have five IT people or 10 IT people that need to do all the IT things for a company. So that's an advantage. In my company, for example, the support people, yes, they do like support and they take tickets and stuff, but they also have a substantial amount of time where they're doing things that is not traditionally support type things. They work on side projects that gives them exposure and experience outside of traditional support roles. So as you gain experience in that way, you can kind of make moves more easily. All right, it is Korean food time. 
again, the last weekend when I ordered Korean food, it lasted me three days, three full days I had it for dinner. Um, I don't know, I might possibly finish this tonight. I only got this yesterday because I intentionally ate less earlier today so that I can basically have more of this. I semi watched episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. No spoilers today, so you don't need to turn this off because I wasn't really paying full attention to it. And I didn't watch it all the way to the end, I only watched till like, I don't even fully remember, but I didn't watch the whole thing. So maybe I'll watch it tonight if I don't get distracted. And if I do, I will have some commentary for you guys. Are there any shows that you guys think I should watch? If you think so, comment down below. Tomorrow at work is one on one day. I have a early meeting tomorrow. I'm really gonna try to go to bed early because like I said, I got woken up really early this morning and I was a little tired today. So I wanna like get my full eight, eight and a half hours of sleep in tonight. So until tomorrow, bye YouTube.